From this video you will learn what are componentless and empty path roads in Angular, when they might be useful and how to apply them in your Angular application. If you are first time on my channel, my name is Dmitry Mozhensky and here you can find a lot of advanced Angular tutorials that you can check out later. But now let's get started and I hope you will learn something new today. All right, here I've got the following application, which is very straightforward and simple one. It consists of four pages and obviously it has four corresponding roads. And right now you can see the um, configuration for each of that road. And if you have ever worked with Angular road or before, nothing should surprise you. However, in the following one minute or so, I will try to very quickly explain what is going on here. And let's get started with data resolving because pages like settings and billing, they require some data to be resolved before the corresponding road is activated because those resolved data uh, that will be resolved by this auth service, it will be um, read it from the activated road inside the component and then rendered in the corresponding component view right here. So this is why we need uh, those uh, resolvers and the same uh, happens for the billing uh, road as well. But in addition to data resolving, we also apply some set of guards because some of the some of those pages they are protected and in order to uh, see the settings and billing page, the user has to be uh, authenticated first and also user has to have the uh, profile owner permission, right? And uh, for the dashboard page, the user has to be also authenticated and has to have admin permission in order to see the corresponding page. And this configuration works. However, it has a couple of disadvantages and let's try to cover some of them. And the first disadvantage is that we have a lot of repetitive stuff in our configuration. For instance, we explicitly define is authenticated guard for each role that has to be protected by this guard. But when we deal with the big project, with the big rotor configuration, it is so easy to forget to add some certain guard and in such a way expose uh, publicly the page. Even worse situation with my resolvers right here because they will be executed every time when we enter settings or billing page. And as you can see, uh, they fetch absolutely the same data and I definitely don't want to do it twice. I want to fetch the uh, user data only one time and then I just want to share those fetched data between roads that rely on this data. And it could be a really trivial task if our settings and billing pages had some common parent road. Because in that case we could move resolver to the parent road, it would be executed only once and the result data would be available for all child roles. And the similar thing we could do for our authentication guards as well. However, we don't have this parent-child relationships between our roles. Instead, you can see that they are all siblings, means they are on the same level. So we have to find a solution how to share already resolved data and authentication guard uh, state between uh, sibling roles. And this is exactly the use case when the componentless and empty path roads come in handy. And the idea behind this pattern is very, very simple. You have to just introduce a new road. Uh, this road has empty path and this road doesn't have component to render. Instead, it has a property children. And then I can move all that uh, roads. I can just move them inside this children array. And even if I already try to save this change and then try to use my navigation, you can see that it remains working, even though we introduced a new parent road. The reason why it is working is very simple. This parent road has empty path and that's why it doesn't break at all my current world structure. And because we already have some kind of parent road 
we can move there inside some um, guards or resolvers that are common for all their children. And what is common here for all those three roles? It is this can activate guard that is checking if the user is authenticated. So it means I can easily take it and introduce the can activate guard right here and place the is authenticated guard inside the parent and uh, componentless road and it means that i can safely remove all those uh, guards from the child roads and if i save it you will see that it remains working and to be sure that it is indeed works i can go to the our service and uh, replace it to false and after that I can't enter any of these three roads anymore, only the home page. But if I revert it back, yeah, you can see that I can successfully enter all those three pages. And what is also important to keep in mind is that this guard, it will not be re-executed when you navigate between uh, children of this road. For instance, if I go from the settings page to the billing one, then this guard will not be executed. Um, I think it is better to see in action, for instance, if we convert it to the function. From here, I return this uh, whole logic. And here, I'm going to just um, console log some message like, like can activate guard was executed. Okay, and you can see that it was called because we navigated immediately to the billing page, but then I go to the settings and nothing happens. I go to the admin dashboard, also nothing happened. But when I go to the home and then I enter back the billing page, you can see it was executed. So this is how it works and this behavior you have to keep in mind. If you want to execute uh, this card every time when you navigate between children, you have to use can activate child um, property. But I will leave it as a can activate for now. So in such a way, we created some kind of scope or group of sibling roles that are protected by one common authentication guard. And what is actually cool here is that every new role that will be added to this group it will be automatically protected by this guard and you don't have to specify it explicitly for each new road. I know when you have only one guard, it might look not so useful, but when you have to deal with many guards, uh, it really becomes handy. Or you can imagine the situation when you have to apply a new guard to some group of sibling roads, uh, then you don't need to specify this new guard explicitly for each road, instead you just apply it in one place, namely inside this uh, componentless road, and then the new guard will be automatically applied to the whole group of roads. And what is also cool here is that you can create some nested groups. For instance, you can see that my settings and billing page they also have a lot of in common. They resolve the same data and uh, they require the same permission. So they uh, use the same guard as well. So we can create a nested componentless road and also it has to have the empty path to not break our URL tree. And um, here, the same way we create children and those roads that have uh, shared things can be extracted from here and moved inside the uh, children uh, array right there. And from here we can also uh, extract this resolve logic and uh, can activate guard and move it uh, to the parent right here. So we don't need to specify it anymore because the uh, parent road will care about execution of this resolver and uh, this uh, can activate guard. And now if I save it, you can see uh, that it still works fine with only one difference is that the data, this resolver will not be re-executed when we navigate between settings and billing, for example, right? So if we open the network tab and uh, let me 
uh, zoom it out a little bit. Uh, so here we go. And you can see that I move between billing and settings. The resolver is not being executed, but when I move to the home page, for instance, and then go back to the settings, yeah, then the data will be um, uh, the, the HTTP call will be fired and data will be resolved. All right, now let's very quickly recap what we just learned. So the empty path and componentless roles allow us to group some uh, amount of sibling roles together and apply to them some shared guards, resolve data or uh, URL parameters. The empty path road makes possible the wrapping of sibling roads without breaking the actual URL uh, tree structure. Because when Angular tries to uh, tries to activate roads for some certain URL, it uses um, strings from path property in order to match the uh, chain of uh, of the roads that needs to be activated for this certain URL. In our case, the concatenation of the string uh, settings with the empty string and then with another empty string, uh, it will eventually match the uh, settings URL. So all those three roads in this chain will be activated for this uh, URL. And because of that, there will be executed um, resolvers and guards respectively. And because this road is also componentless, it means that we don't need to create any intermediate component, which in our case would be just useless. And another benefit is that in componentless roads, the result data and uh, router parameters they will be merged to its children. So that's why we um, didn't need to adjust this part here in the settings component, because if it was not componentless road, then we would need to access data from the parent road like that. But because in componentless roads, the parameters and result data is merged to its children, uh, we don't need to do that because uh, those data will be merged to this uh, settings road and we can uh, get it directly in this activated road. All right, guys, I hope you learned already something new today. And if so, and if you like this video, then most probably you will like also my course about advanced and glor forms. And this is one of the most advanced and in-depth courses about this Angular topic. And it can really bring your skills to the next level and it can dramatically increase your market value. There, besides the basic things uh, like template-driven forms or reactive forms. We will do a lot of source code investigations, so you will understand in depth how Angular forms are working. And at the end of the course, you will be able to build really complex custom form controls like custom drop-down component that supports multi-selection, option searching, or accessible navigation through the options and selecting them just by pressing enter on your keyboard. And additionally, you will learn how to create forms dynamically from some JSON config, which appropriate architecture to choose for that, and how to optimize it by lazily load dynamic controls. Everything you will learn from this course. So you can already go and check the video description to this video, there you will find all necessary links and maybe discounts. Otherwise, I'm looking forward for your comments and thoughts in the comment section. Please let me know, have you ever used that componentless and empty path roads in your application or you just uh, learned it from this video and you are going to apply it in your current Angular applications. And also, I wish you a productive week ahead, stay safe and see you in the next video.